Thank you for joining us again this week on Financial Fitness Fridays. I am Alex Jacobs, the owner of Coppermine Fieldhouse. And since last week, we had a great uh, response as far as our questions and answers and topics we discussed, which was regarding saving money at home. Uh, I would like to take this time to go through some of the questions that were sent to us and walk through those and kind of give my perspective as far as how we can help each other in the Coppermine community. So the first question that came over was, will you be addressing investment strategies and savings options? And as I discussed last week, some of the savings options that we could look at were utility bills, phone bills, insurance, those things um, are all invoices or bills that come into your home that you can look at and try to restructure or find ways to save money. Uh, as I mentioned uh, last week at our Racket and Fitness location, we saved um, uh, about $200 a month on our, our phone service charges, which were equated to about $2,400 a year. Uh, as far as our insurance carriers that we have, again, we negotiated that and we were able to save about $2,500 a year just on our insurance carrier for copper mines. We do have a lot of commercial vehicles uh, in our fleet, but at home, this could be savings for you, for your one car, two cars. You might have three cars if you have children as well, but it's a, it's a way to save money for your, your automobile and your home. Um, some other areas would be your utility bills. Again, we talked about uh, the utility providers are very aggressive in trying to uh, compete for some of that electricity bill. And we're really opening this up to everybody at home. If you have different ideas, we'd love, we want to share them with the Copyright community and figure out how we can relay this message to other families and let them know different ways that they can save money. The second part of the question was um, investment strategies. And I'm not uh, an investment professional, I'm not a certified, certified financial planner, but I will tell you the most important thing is to invest in yourself. And that could be taking an inventory set of what you are good at. What, what are the skills that you can do very, very well? Um, potentially taking this time to set goals, taking this time to do research, uh, read, things like that will help stimulate your mind for different ideas. So if, if, you're, if you're trying to figure out what can I invest in, right now the best thing you can do is invest in yourself. And that's why the Compromise Education Series that we're going to be bringing to you is going to teach you how to invest in yourself that you could further your skills to find a path to entrepreneurship. And that's pretty much what we are developing in this program. The next question that came up was how to plan for an unexpected job loss. And that's, uh, I'm sorry that that happened and, and I'm sure a lot of people have gone through that or are going through that now and it's, it's very difficult. Um, one thing to, to understand is one, it's not your fault. Number two is if you were gainfully employed up until this point, this is a, a severe situation that's happened, you obviously are going to be able to be gainfully employed in the future. You have skill sets and things that your employer saw in you that were good quality. So it's not like you're not unemployable. It's just this is a difficult time. So the, the future is there for you to get a job back if that's what you want to do. This might be a time for you to reflect and say, you know, again, what are my skill sets? What can I do? What have I done in the past that I'm very good at? that I could potentially look at generating income on my own. Um, if you were um, a consultant, maybe there's ways that you could co-acquire some of those clients on your own and consult for them on the side. If you were in a trade, maybe there's a way that you could look at the, the trades business and say, you know what, I, I was working for another company, they laid off a bunch of people. Are there ways that I could find a path to pick up some income on my own? And that's really what the Capital My Education series is what we're bringing to everybody is, is that pathway to success. How can we help you leverage what you've done in the past, find the potential inside of yourself to create uh, an angle or a pathway to entrepreneur, entrepreneurial success, very difficult to say. So um, that's, that's pretty much what we want to focus on in our Find A Way series, which is making the entrepreneur. So we're kind of touching on some of these things to these questions, which, which are great. Another question that came in was, can you explain the federal COVID-19 stimulus package and how it affects small businesses in Maryland in regards to payroll and employees? Uh, that was a pretty long question. Um, so 
Fortunately for us, we have a great team of professionals, bankers, accountants, and those sort of things. And we, they have sent us a complete packet, a complete email on what to expect on the stimulus packages. And there are, I think there's two or three in the state of Maryland, and there's definitely an SBA package. But instead of me telling you exactly what those are, if you email us, I will make sure that we send out exactly what our professionals had sent us so you can follow it. It's nice and tight. They did a great job putting it together for us and we'll send it out to everybody so they can figure out what stimulus package or what package is, is best for you or for your uh, small business. The question that uh, came up was, will this help me plan short and long term in response to COVID-19? Well, I think everybody at home should always have short and long term goals. You know, the short term goals will probably be less than six months. You know, Take this time now to figure out you know, if, if you do want to go search for a job and you do want to pursue that path, what are the goals? How many people do you have to talk to? Is your, is your resume ready and that sort of thing? Are you going to find success mailing out resumes, talking to your circle or network of friends? Those sort of things are going to help you lead to that job for future growth. Or you may want to say, I want to get a part-time job because I want, to, I want to really lever up some of my skill sets and figure out, I, I do want to try something on my own. I want to go in that, that direction, that path. Um, I've always taken that path and, and many people say, you know, starting your own company is very scary or it's very risky. And my response to them is, if you get let go by your employer, then you are out of business. If you start a company with many, many customers or dozens of customers or hundreds of customers, if 10% of your customers let you go or fire you, you're still going to business the next day. You're, you're still in business the next day. So the question is, is it riskier to create a company that has multiple customers or go down a path that potentially um, having one employer and it's something like the COVID-19 could, could lay you off and now you're out of business. So those are things you have to think about in, 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 in our education series. So those are things we want to talk about and bring up and figure out, is there an opportunity for you to, again, list your skill sets, understand what you're good at, and then parlay that into a potential business opportunity. Thank you for joining us for Financial Fitness Fridays and we look forward to all of your feedback and please comment on any questions and we're excited to talk to you next week.